Hi, I'm Roberta and I'm here today at Red Lantern with my friend Mark Jensen. Hello. Hello. Amazing. Now, we're at Red Lantern, which is a Vietnamese restaurant, but when you look around, what you might be seeing is a barber shop. Not very common in Vietnamese restaurants, is it? No, not particularly. So there's a bit of a backstory. Long ago, before Mark was a chef, before I even met you, you were a hairdresser. Yeah, that's right. So I actually, I've done two apprenticeships. So I did a, a hairdressing apprenticeship. Right. And then I worked in the industry for another six years. So, you know, eight to ten years in, in that industry. And then I became a chef. Right. And I met you oh, 20, 22 years ago once you were chefing at the Olympic. That's opposite right. Opposite Moore Park, right? That's exactly right. That was really my first big break as a chef. That's when I got to do my food. Okay. And that lays the groundwork for how you came into Vietnamese food because you met a couple of people then, they came to work for you I think, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Luke and Pauline both worked for me. They, they, were, they were studying or working other jobs and this was a part-time gig for them. They'd come be waiters in the restaurant. Right. And then Pauline and I eventually became romantically involved and uh, Luke at that time was looking to start a Vietnamese uh, restaurant. Right. His family and he grew up in Cabramatta and he wanted to bring the, you know, Vietnamese experience into the inner city. So he wanted to open up a restaurant in Surrey Hills and he had, he couldn't find a chef. So he, I eventually volunteered Okay. and he accepted me and that's my introduction to Vietnamese food. Now, I love this because it means we can talk about Vietnamese food. You were once where we are. You know, yeah, we don't absolutely. know a lot about Vietnamese food, but you didn't grow up with this. There was a time when you didn't know much about Vietnamese food either, right? Yeah, that, that, that's true. So, I mean, my training was more that sort of traditional sort of European style training. But as with most of your, your um, home, get, cooks. home cooks, uh, they will be familiar with things like frying pans and saucepans. Sure. And so, you know, I had that experience. But then when I went to cook Vietnamese food, I discovered that essentially because of the French influence in Vietnamese food, a lot of the cooking techniques I was already familiar with, Good. apart from things like frying in a wok, mm -hmm. that was probably the only thing I had to really learn that I hadn't experienced in my previous training. So let's start there, because what I want you to tell us is what are the, what are the pitfalls, what are the steep learning curves we've got when we're learning Vietnamese food? So tell me about the wok, what do you need to know? Well, the wok, like the most versatile piece of equipment in any kitchen, I believe, because you can deep fry, you can stir fry, you can steam. It's, it's um, such a fantastic piece of equipment. But the thing is, when you're using it in the home environment, it's best not to put too many things inside of it. Okay. Because you can't really get that intense, fiery heat that we get in a commercial kitchen. So it's best if, you know, if you're cooking for four people, then it's possibly best to cook individually take the things out of the wok, keep them aside, cook everything, and then before you serve, you pop it back in the wok. Great. Mix it all through together, and that's when you serve it to the guests. Okay, otherwise we're stewing, not stir -frying. You're stewing, you're not getting that nice caramelization on your meats and different things, okay. so yeah. What else do we need to know about Vietnamese food? What, what are the two or three essentials that you think define Vietnamese food? Well, the abundance of herbs and salads. Yes is really fantastic and and also it's a lot of herbs like literally you could have just herbs on the table and you're you the table is it firstly when you're having a meal it's not set out entree main and main as such it's just like this beautiful banquet table full of wonderful salads herbs grilled fried meats fish soups all these things different sources different sauce lots of different sauce and i actually find one of the the beautiful things about uh, vietnamese food is that you prepare a dish, but then it's up to the individual to add chili, to add lemon, to add all those uh, condiments and seasonings to their own dish to make it their own. Okay, so different people at the same table are going to season their food differently. Absolutely. So there's a few dishes that I guess come to mind when we think about Vietnamese food, and we're, we're yeah. cooking a few of them this month. We've got the fresh rice paper rolls. We've got the bun seo. Um, nice. I think the other dish that most Australians think about when they think Vietnamese is pho. Yeah. And we've made a decision not to do a pho because it's pretty complicated, isn't it? Oh, it is. To make, to make it like delicious, it, it's, it's a 
day or two process. Or so even longer, because they start with master stocks no, often, don't they? Well, abs well, you know, you're making, you're making a really beautiful but almost um, um, consomme style stock to start with. So, right. I mean, it takes patience and, and, and gentle loving care. And it's something that simmers overnight at least, if not for a couple of days. And there's many, many processes to make that really delicious. So you, you're first going to make your, your meat broth, but it's, it is, like I said, it's more of a consomme than a broth. And then you're going to add different spices. Then you're going to add certain vegetables to release their flavor. So I, I just think that you're better off going to a restaurant and okay. enjoying it. So that's one of those dishes that it's really worth going out for we'll make a lot of other awesome Vietnamese yeah. dishes at home this month. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Now, I think we need to come back and explain, because we talked about the fact that you used to be a hairdresser. Now, you've got this very cool barber shop yeah. at the back of Red Lantern. So yeah. we can actually pop in for a lunch, and well, not me, because I don't have a beard, but if I was a bloke, I could pop in for lunch and a beard trim, right? Is that how it works? Uh, ab absolutely. I love this. No, absolutely. I mean, it's such a fun space because I, I originally this idea came through the first lockdown that we experienced here in Sydney. I just thought, well, what can I do to utilize the space that we have here? And I thought of the barbershop straight away because I have like laneway entrance here. Uh, and I just wanted to create a space for guys to come and hang out and have a trim and maybe have a drink, have a cocktail, maybe so go through to the restaurant. We can have a cocktail while we you have a You can have a cocktail while you have a haircut. I've got some really fantastic clothing here. You have. You've got some beautiful retro military clothes. Yeah, some retro military stuff going on. So it's, um, it's a, just a really fun space. And I think, I, you know, you might think that's a bit odd, but I, I find that the two, the barbershop and the restaurant, just work together so, so well. And it's you. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So the hairdresser who became a chef, who became a hairdresser or a barber. Yeah. yeah. I love it. That's I it. love it. Thank you so much for inspiring pleasure. this month of cooking and um, for sharing your beautiful barbershop with us. Oh, it's such a pleasure. I'm, I'm happy to help you inspire home cooks at home. Awesome. Let's get cooking.